The concept of purchasing power parity is important in international trade and international finance because it helps us to understand what determines the level of the spot exchange rate. It also helps us to determine what, what determines the rate of change in exchange rates. The first type of purchasing power parity we want to look at is what's referred to as absolute purchasing power parity. Now the idea is that a commodity costs the same regardless of what currency is used to purchase it or where it is selling. So if beer costs two pounds sterling in London and the exchange rate is 0.6 pounds per US dollar, then beer costs two pounds sterling divided by 0.6 or three dollars and 33 cents in New York. So what did we do? What was the equation? We said that the price in the UK was equal to the spot exchange rate. In this case, the spot exchange rate was the number of units of the foreign currency um, necessary to buy one US dollar times the price in the US. So if the spot exchange rate, uh, if we rearrange these terms, dividing both sides by price in the US, we get the price in the UK divided by the price in the US. And so we can see that that spot exchange rate is the ratio of prices in two countries. So for example, if the price of apples in New York is $4 per bushel, and it's 2.4 pound, pounds sterling per bushel in London, then absolute purchasing power parity tells us that it's going to be the ratio of these two. So it's 2.4 divided by 4, or 0.6 pounds sterling is going to be, per US dollar, is the spot exchange rate. The second type of purchasing power parity I want to talk about is relative purchasing power parity. And this determines the change in exchange rates over time. The change in exchange rates is determined by the relative change in inflation rates. So suppose um, the exchange rate is 0.5 pounds sterling um, per one dollar, okay, or 0.5 pounds sterling equals one US dollar. If the inflation rate is expected to be 10% in Britain and 0% in the US, then we expect the price of the dollar to rise by 10%. So we take that exchange rate of 0 0.50, we multiply it by 1.1, 1, 1 plus the interest rate, and we get um, 0.55 pounds sterling. Okay, And this is going to mean that your one US dollar gets you more pounds sterling, or it takes more pounds sterling to buy one US dollar. So you can see that, that the um, value of the US dollar has risen. Okay, What if the inflation rate is not zero? Then the relative inflation rate determines the change in exchange rates. And so here we just look at the difference between the two exchange rates, or I'm sorry, the two inflation rates. So suppose the US inflation rate is 4%, and we'll use the same example we did before, where the um, inflation rate in Britain was 10%, then the relative inflation rate is 10% minus 4% or 6%. So in this case, it's going to be that spot exchange rate 0 0.50 times 1.06. And so now the exchange rate is going to be 0.53 pounds sterling per US dollar. Okay. The relative purchasing power uh, parity formula for one year is, or we can look at this, this is the expected spot exchange rate in time period one minus the current spot exchange rate divided by um, the current spot exchange rate. So this is a percentage change essentially, and it's going to be equal to the difference between these two inflation rates. All right. If we want to multiply uh, both sides by S0 and then add S0 to both sides, we're going to get this equation. Then we can 
we'll get the one over here we'll factor out the s0 or that spot exchange rate we'll get the spot exchange rate times one plus okay the difference between the two exchange rates and that's what we just did we said what do we have? We said the exchange rate, or I'm sorry, the change in inflation rate, or the expected inflation rate in Great Britain was 10% minus the inflation rate in the U.S., which was um, 4%. So 10 minus 4 is 6, 1 plus 0 0.06 times that spot exchange rate. And that's exactly what we did. The more general formula says that Suppose we're looking over time, so we're looking T periods into the future. Okay, we still take the difference between the two inflation rates. Okay, so it's one plus this, and then we raise it to the tth power. So it looks essentially like a future value um, equation. And so, for example, consider the previous example, and let's assume that that inflation ra uh, rate in Britain and the U.S. Are expected to remain the same for for three years so if we wanted to find the expected exchange rate in three years then we would use this formula and we would we still have 0 0.50 that was the uh, exchange rate the original one at time period zero times 1.06 raised to the third power so we would expect in three years the spot exchange rate would be 0.5955 pound sterling per US dollar. So um, inflation helps determine the change in inflation rates and if you believe in absolute purchasing power parity and there's you know some question about that um, and the reason for that is is that in order for the absolute version to work the commodities have to be essentially identical and you would expect it to be quite true for things like you know gold which is the same in London as it is in New York but you have a basket of goods you're using to figure out these prices and when you think about it those the basket of goods is not identical okay you know a sweater in New York may not be the same as a sweater in London okay Great Britain's kind of famous for their wool sweaters so they're not exactly comparable so the prices may not be you know, may not, uh, the ratio may not give us an exact exchange rate. But relative purchasing power parity seems to be pretty powerful because it looks at um, the relative change in inflation rates.